Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I was supposed to say back, but I don't think the B came through. Anyway, so this is shot on a different camera than I'm used to. Also a different microphone. Hopefully it'll still be uh, reasonably audible. Uh, the issue with this camera is that it keeps auto-focusing, which I really, really hate. But I'm going to try to do things calmly so that I don't end up with a whole bunch of unfocused stuff. And I do know that whenever I hear the uh, microphone, or rather the uh, lens start going, or, 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 that means it's starting to focus, so I have to be quiet for a second. Otherwise, you guys aren't going to see what I'm talking about. We'll try to make it through. Anyway, so what you're looking at right now is, for some people, probably very familiar. This is the envelope that the cousin comes in. And I got this one secondhand. But this isn't about the cousin. I just used the envelope. Uh, I laminated it so that I could make a disc planner out of it. And this entire thing is full of things that I've either printed myself or that I have uh, made or at least gotten secondhand happy planner stuff. But I wanted to go into some ideas that I have for old planners or old notebooks that you're trying to fill, something along those lines. And I've seen plenty of really nice videos on what options there are out there. And today I wanted to kind of explore a few options that I didn't quite see, or maybe they were mentioned somewhere, I just didn't see them. Or at least they were not mentioned very often, so kind of like a rare or at least rare-ish type of idea. But uh, let's take a look. First of all, I'm going to move this aside a bit so that you can see the inside. And now I have to turn it and see if it'll focus in a moment. There, so this is the inside, and on the other side of the laminated envelope, I put the uh, little comic thing that came with it, so I can always look at it and read it whenever I want. So here is the title image, new ideas for old planners. I think I showed this in a previous video as well, and of course this means old planners as in uh, the books, not the people, because there's planners of all ages and all that sort of thing. Everybody's appreciated in this community, so that is not the issue here. Also in the background, the layout is something that I came up with myself at some point to try and make something that would work for me because I do my daily activities and I also like to track my spending. So I thought this might be an idea, but the activity thing is too small. I'm going to have to make that bigger. I'm still like moving around uh, with different ideas of what I want my layout to look like. But I've also just been uh, printing my own stuff because I like the thought of being able to fill my own planners with these discs. Of course, disc planners and ring planners so far are my favorites. But let's take a look because, of course, here we have an example of what an old planner thing might look like. You may have some uh, sheets that you've either printed yourself or you just have an old planner that has a different date on it. Like this one I wrote February 2023. Now, this is a much um, younger print job than February 2023. I think I printed this like a month and a half ago or something. But just to give you an example of like an example date of an old planner, you might have something like this laying around. And now we're going to go into a whole bunch of ideas that I had. We're going to start with the least exciting onto the most exciting slash imaginative type of ideas. And the first one that we're going to go look at is the should do list. Now there are a lot of to do lists and a lot of things that you might want to get to like oh uh, remember to do this remember to do that. You could always put things in there that you should do but that you for some reason always tend to put off and I put here just a couple of things that I came to mind when I was thinking like what would be on a should do list. Well, of course, the should do item itself, in this case, declutter bedroom. And then the status is doing and a follow up. What are you going to do after you're done with that? And in this case, it says donate items, but you can put just about anything there that you want. And so that is the first one, not the most exciting, I know. And then I'm going to move on to the next one. Yeah, it's in screen, just checked. So the first one on this page says teacher planner, one word of the day. And this actually requires a little bit more explanation. I bought a uh, teacher planner from Happy Planner from 2021, 2022, that school year. And it's, if you know the teacher planner, it's like for teachers to have a whole bunch of layouts for their classes. And there's like a m multiple classes per day. And there's like homework things that you can put in there. But all of these really small, spaces like this. I kind of emulated it because this is just like that. I just remade all of my planner pages into my ideas. So you have all these little sections 
And I took that teacher planner. I was like, what should I do with this? Because it's outdated, first of all. I bought it outdated because it was cheap. And I was like, I could probably do something with it. And what I uh, settled on is word of day. And then for many, many years. So you like have, for instance, here, this says the 6th of March. Kind of like a five-year diary thing. But instead of uh, one section per day, it's one small cell per day. So over here, you could say uh, 2024, uh, March 6th was all about the car and uh, to the seventh was all about free lunch and then eighth was all about shopping like little bits that you can put in there and if you can write smaller than that you could probably put uh, two words in there currently I have actually managed to do that in the actual teacher planner this is just a few example things that I wrote in there so that's an option and as you can see uh, this isn't the exact amount that is also in the teacher planner and maybe the planner you have has more or less grid space but if you have the teacher planner i think it has about this many over here so that's uh, at least a decade and more uh, that you could put one word a day in just one planner that seemed like fun and then you can definitely take a look and see what happened kind of on each day for the past 10 years and it's just something fun and it doesn't take a whole lot of time to come up with something because it's just one or two words that's all you can fit in there I uh, wouldn't stress too much about what the exact word's going to be but just like something fun that you can put in there next one is maintenance log also not super exciting but can be very useful like there are things that tend to pop up around the house or with your car or something along those lines and uh and then you just kind of like forget about it so i'm thinking if we could or if you could use an old planner to put just the issue over here and then uh the date that you detected it and a note like what should you do with it and then you might have a little log of things that you have noticed. Doesn't even have to be things that you're actually going to take action on. Kind of like here, the musty smell near the uh, back window. That only occurred once. That only occurred on the 7th of March because this is an actual item that I wrote in there. Hasn't occurred since. But I'm just going to keep an eye on that. If it occurs more often, maybe there's something going on. And I was also thinking maybe there's like a mouse that managed to like hide under the, the roof tiles there and like try to build a nest and left or something because that also tends to smell a little bit. But if I notice it more often, then I'll know that on the 7th of March, I also had that issue. I smelled that before in that same location, maybe. And the car muffler making a weird sound. Yeah, that one definitely needs replacing. Uh, that one is currently being held together with uh, well wishes and metal cable binders but okay so 3rd of April we're gonna go have that replaced in the shop but if you are not entirely sure what it is you can always say hey I'm here a weird sound in the car and note it at that date and then notes uh, ask somebody who knows something about cars or call the shop and see if you can come in to have a take a look just to keep reminders of things that might be important to have checked out if you want to do some adulting around the house so that is the maintenance log Moving on to product reviews over here. If you've bought something and you want to make sure to note what you think about it and give it a bunch of stars, you could put that in here. For instance, what's the product name? In this case, I reviewed for myself the Battery Daddy. It also helps to like, keep track of things that you might want to recommend to people that you know. And uh, if you have a whole bunch of this stuff filled out, and somebody's like, oh, I need something to, at least I have so much batteries laying around. You're like, oh, wait, I had something for that. Let me take a look. And you're like, oh, that's actually really good. Uh, at least I was very happy about that. And here's why. Like, would I recommend it? Yeah. Uh, for instance, if you don't know what the Battery Daddy is, it's like this box that you can store uh, batteries in, different types of batteries, has like special sections for that. And the thing with the Battery Daddy, aside from the fact that it has those sections, is that for one, you have one place to put all your batteries. Like most people who have batteries in their house tend to have them in different types of junk drawers and places. With the Battery Daddy, it's all in one location and it comes with a battery tester which is very nice because then you can just grab any random battery that you see laying around the house grab the tester is this one good okay goes in the battery daddy if it's not good it goes into whatever special box you have around your place in town where you're supposed to put empty batteries and then you can just quickly see whether you have batteries first of all and if you need a battery you know exactly where it is so i thought that was very nice and that's why i put a little project review in here for that you could put that in a separate old planner just because and something you could recommend could then be pulled straight from the product reviews planner i guess or notebook 
Next one is pet grooming and vet visits. So basically like a pet diary type of thing. What have you done to the pets and when? These dates are all fictional. And uh, just kind of like you cut the hair, you give them uh, a nail clipping, you've brushed the hair out, you've, I don't know, uh, cleaned around the eyes or whatever it is that your pet needs, clean the fish bowl or uh, replace the uh, moss inside of the lizard tank. If you put moss in there, I don't know. Maybe amphibians like moss. I don't know. But if there's like certain things that you tend to do routinely for your pets, and if you have like vet visits coming up or something, you can put that in a pet grooming and vet visit uh log which can be very useful also because you may notice things like you can also put stuff in here like they have a bit of an irritation around the nose or something and you notice that at a certain date and then it goes away next week and then if it comes back you can look through your pet log and go hey they had it at that time too and maybe they had like a new food that they were eating or a new snack might also be good to put in there like i bought a new snack today composed out of such and such things started giving it on that date and if you then notice other things you can put that in there as well so you can keep track of your pet's health very interesting to do that and see what's going on particularly because my dog has very sensitive uh stomach and whenever she has issues i'm wondering like what caused it what's different what's new and then i could look up in the pet grooming and pet visit or just pet diary what's been going on and maybe related to something like that which is also very useful for veterinarians who might want to know what's changed and you can just bring the thing with you and say hey look on this date i did that and then shortly after we had these issues or something along those lines so that is that option Oh, Beth Diary. Oh, that's kind of like a combination then. And this would be, uh, this is more of an idea of just making like a journal type thing for your pets. Like you may put the, uh, the experiences that they've had, like been to the dog park, met such and such dog, had some time playing, had a lot of fun, or dug a hole somewhere, or caught a mouse, or uh, I don't know, found a new thing in my tank that I hadn't found before. Just like a little bit as though you were writing as your pet in a diary. So that's like a pet diary option. Then the next one we're going through here real quick because these aren't like super in-depth that we need to really discuss them too deeply. But this is a partner slash housemate meeting notes uh, log. If you have people that you live with that you need to be in communication with, you can make uh, little meetings and like have little meeting notes. Make sure to put the main topics in there and follow-ups and decisions made so you can all look back at that and say oh on that day we had a meeting and we said that we were going to put the trash out on Tuesday or something whatever it is that may later become a uh, point of dispute. Something like that. So it's just kind of like set in stone not really but at least in black and white so you have something to point at and also if there's nothing going on that's like terribly uh bad you can always put stuff in there like uh good things that are happening just fun things that you're happy with each other's presence and company and that everything is going well give each other compliments or whatever it is that you want to do but at least you'll have it logged and that was the point of this idea moving on all right this is a fun one. So here we have two different layouts that are kind of connected. So on the one end, you have the extreme partner wish list. And on the other hand, we have the actual partner wish list. And so the idea of this is basically you take one side and you write all the crazy wishes that you could ever want in a partner in here. Like, oh, they got to have a Lamborghini or they got to have a super big mansion or all the weird like 10 out of 10 requests that you might have that are impossible for one person to fill. But you could put them in this list. And then when you're done filling out a couple of these items, you don't have to fill the entire page. But when you've like filled up a couple of things that really popped up, like, oh, I'd really like them to have this in like the ideal situation. You can take a look at those things and see what exactly is it that I'm really looking for. Like over here, I had a must be absolutely loaded, like a thing that would be an extreme wish to have. And then on the other side, I put has to have a job, at least. Like that's the more reasonable expectation in a partner. Like, okay, uh, they don't have to be a millionaire, but at least they got to be able to pay their own way because I'm not looking for a charity case. I'm looking for an equal uh, partnership, that type of thing. And then the same for every other thing uh, in there. And just to kind of like, first of all, like have fun coming up with extreme ideas for what your partner should be like, what they should have, and then going for that little kernel of truth that's in there. 
and putting that in your actual wish list so you also have some idea of like okay this is really extreme this would be nice but it's definitely not going to happen ever but it would be good if they had this like this is the minimum wish list basically that you would have in a partner and you can of course do this multiple times and i think the next one is also kind of related but slightly different yeah, here we go date review so if you're out there with your actual partner wish list you can go and make reviews for the people that you've dated now these are all fictional I haven't dated any perry's daves or freds so uh, there's just like a couple of examples i wrote like you can write down their name and a short note on what happened and your rating and whether you would date them again for instance these are just like things that i came up with maybe you have different ideas about what a date review would entail or would need to have in it in order to be a good date review for you but that's just something that i think would be fun to also kind of keep track of how your dates have been going and how often you've been going on dates and where you've been if you want to like go to different places each time you can keep a log here of all the places that you've been with a date and then you can say oh i haven't been to this place yet because it's not in my list so let's go there for a new suggestion i suppose and now we're heading into the more imaginative stuff because on the other side we see here day in the life of now this is more of an idea of imagine you were somebody else for a day what would their day possibly be like like over here i put a couple of names that i just kind of made up so if you happen to know somebody named daisy may bentley or whatever i'm not writing about that person these are all fictional and like a short backstory you're like what are they like for instance this Derek jones is a 34 year old bank clerk and then you just kind of look uh, or at least try to imagine like a writing exercise like what would their day maybe have looked like on Monday the 8th of May, for instance. And in this case, I said monthly meeting was dicey. The numbers don't lie. You might be looking at some layoffs in our future. Hopefully they'll use the last in first out approach, something like that. Just to kind of like imagine what another person might be going through in their life. And also this might be interesting to do if you run into somebody. This is just something that I came up with on the spot. But if you ever run into somebody and you're like, hmm, I wonder what's going on with them. Like maybe they did something you're not entirely sure what's going on or why they did that. Maybe they cut you off or whatever. Try to imagine that you were that person and then write like an entry for them which might also help either vent some frustration or just try to, uh, I guess, calm your own nerves by imagining that they had a good reason for whatever it is. And then you can put the good reason over here like that. Kind of like just a fun imagination exercise, a writing exercise, and a little bit of maybe uh, trying to put yourself in other people's shoes. So that is day in the life of. Then kind of similar, but not quite the same. Uh, we had a moment is what I put here because I'm not entirely sure what we would call this type of thing. But for instance, you had a moment with somebody in a grocery store where you both reached for the same thing and they had a short little exchange there, a pleasant one, I hope, because this is more the positive thing. Like we had a moment because the other one's going over here. We'll get to that in a moment. So you just had a positive little moment with a complete stranger and you want to kind of remember that that even happened because it tends to be uh, something that happens in a very fleeting moment. Also not really something that you tend to talk to your friends about. Like you don't tend to go, hey, I was in the grocery store and then we both reached for the same bottle of ketchup and you were like, oh, ha ha, sorry. And then we moved on and we're going to go like, well, cool. Great story, Janet. So uh, you can always put that in here because these are the little moments that kind of make up your life. So it might be nice to have some place to look back on the time that you ran into somebody who happened to have the same shirt on as you and like, oh, hey, hi, I'm wearing that as well. Like that type of stuff, the small passing moments that are just kind of a fun little highlight of the day you could put that in a we had a moments journal log or something then on the other side like i said we're going to get to that now the name and shame so that same person that may have cut you off in traffic uh you can name them here like oh my god this guy was driving a ford something and color blue and we were about to turn off and then you just had to cut in and then you can like uh maybe put something over here like usually when something happens, for instance, somebody who you completely don't know uh, walking down the street says something stupid to you and you're like, oh my God, I didn't say anything because I was so flabbergasted. But what I could have said was, and then you can like write that over here, kind of like get that off your chest because usually what happens with me anyway is that I'll have an interaction like that with somebody who's just doing something randomly negative for no apparent reason. 
And then I start thinking over and over again about that situation and just wondering if, if what would happen if I had actually stood up for myself or said something back or had a fun reply or something like that. And then I'll keep trying to come up with good things. But that person is long gone and they're never going to actually hear the great stuff that you came up with. So maybe just put it in here and get it out of the way. Get it off your chest to move on. Or just have fun imagining completely making a fool out of somebody who embarrassed you in public or did something mean or something, something along those lines. So that's the name and shame idea. And lastly, a burn book. Now, <laughs> this is of course for YouTube, so I didn't actually want to write anything too serious. But the thing with old planners is that you don't really care too much about them, not relevant anymore. So you could very easily take a pen and really like scratch on there, uh, all your frustrations and things like that. You don't even have to write it out like this. Like the last time that I had a page for a burn book, all the, the words were pretty much in the middle because I was just really like scratching and getting very angry. And then when I was done, I just tear out the page and I put it in my uh, paper shredder and it's gone. So that really helps to vent some of the anger because you don't want to hang on to that. And what I noticed the other day, actually, when I was doing that, I had two or three things that were really upsetting me in that moment and so I spent a lot of time really like getting into it like really scratching I think I almost broke a pen as well that's how much energy I was putting into it and then I tore out the pages and I put them through the perfor or the perforator through the shredder and then I was like huh nice and then I started a journal where I write things that I love because I was feeling in a very happy mood like all the anger had just left my system and then I had room to write about stuff that I really loved and really get excited about the things that I loved. So I made a new journal just because I got that angry energy off of my system or out of my system and off of my chest or both at the same time. So I think that would be an excellent use for an old book, that, an old notebook that you're not planning on using anyway. Pretty sure we all have at least a few notebooks that we bought like 10 years ago. And we always kind of wanted to use it, but then it kind of just fell out of favor because you bought a new one that looked much better and you're kind of like tired of it but you don't want to throw it out because that'd be a waste do it like this just throw something like that on there for a uh, bit of therapy as well really helps to get some of that frustration out and uh, use up all that paper it's very useful so even if you tear out the page which you don't care about because you're not going to use the rest of the notebook for anything else anyway it's helpful for you and that means that it's a good cause, it's a good purpose. So that is all of my ideas. How many did I have here? Let me see. This is one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to count this as six basically because it's the same thing but then slightly different sides of the coin. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13 new ideas, excuse me, for old planners and old notebooks that I'm hoping you will find some use for. In any case, make sure to drop a comment. What other uses do you have for old notebooks that are not in here and that you haven't seen in any other video because it's fun to collect these things so we can all learn and use our old notebooks instead of having to buy new ones over and over again or feel bad about the ones that we never used. So that is it for this video. Hope you enjoyed that. Make sure to also leave a like if you want to subscribe. That's even better. I really appreciate every new subscriber. Hope to see you in another video. Thanks for watching and bye-bye for now.